Hey guys, how you doing? Uncle Steph here. So, is coding dying? Is it the end of a developer gold rush, the boom? No, it's not. It's just, well, there's three things that are impacting coding today, and I'm going to go over these three things, and then I'm going to give you the strategy and how to navigate the waters now in terms of getting your first coding job. A lot of people think, oh, it's AI. That's it. AI is replacing all the development jobs. It's over. It's done. Well, no, that's part of it. That's part of it. We're starting to see companies retool where they're leveraging AI now. So that means they're much more productive. That means they need a lot less or less entry level developers. But this is a temporary thing because what's happening now is companies are just kind of feeling their way through this. They're trying to figure out how they're going to use AI and how they're going to leverage it in their current workflows. And I, I believe in time, I don't know if it's going to be six months, I don't know if it's going to be a year. I believe that in time, they're going to figure out how they're going to position the new developer hires, how they're going to position them in their new workflows, which have been highly impacted by AI. That said, there's a particular niche in software development where AI is not having such a big impact. So if you wanted to go work for one of the big companies, the Googles, the Metas, uh, IBMs, etc., yeah, you're going to be, uh, whoosh, the AI whoosh, is going to hit you, at least temporarily, because they have the ability to make those pivots and they're able to implement uh, these AI workflows, if you will. Something I advocate for. But if you look at the vast majority of development, the small businesses, SMB, AI is having more of a peripheral, more of a marginal impact in terms of that. So what I'm talking about, I'm talking about web apps, e-commerce implementations, people are working with uh, PHP, WordPress, Shopify people, people getting up somebody's blogs and branding site. AI is not having too much of an, of an impact there, right? It really isn't. You should be using it because it's going to speed up things, but it's not transforming it. Whereas if you're working for a huge company like a Meta or a Google, and you are writing uh, lots of uh, highly uh, detailed, in the guts type of coding, where AI could be used to automate some of those processes, yeah, that those guys were were affected for sure. So yeah, AI is having an impact, number one, but it's not the big thing. I think the big reason why we're not seeing so much hiring now in 2025, I'm recording this in June, late June 2025, is because during the COVID period, there was an artificial boom in the number of people that were being hired as developers. Now we're seeing the rebalancing. They hired too many people, and a lot of people weren't really qualified because they were doing what they call defensive hires. They were doing a lot of defensive hires, so now that is not a rebalancing again, right? So imagine you go out there, and you go to a buffet and you eat tons of food. Ooh, that's a good dish. That's a good dish. That's a good dish. That's a good dish. You eat so much food. And then you're like, you've eaten way too much. Uh, then you add your dessert and then you're like, you're bloated. And for the next two days, you cut down what you eat because you just ate too much. That's what happened with all these tech companies. They hired like crazy because it was the defensive hiring uh, time of the economy for whatever reasons. It's, you know, economies are very complex, so it's really hard to predict where things, why things are going to happen, where they're going to go. That's why economists are rarely right, by the way. When you listen to economists, pay attention to what they say, and then you find out a year later, six months later, they were wrong. Anyway, that being said, um, a lot of companies were doing defensive hiring, meaning hiring way too many people. So now that the dust has settled, this COVID uh, lockdown uh, thing has passed, uh, they're now rebalancing their workforce because, again, they overhired in the first place. And the final reason why you're seeing people having a harder time get jobs, not just in coding, across the board, is because of uh, recession. We're on, we're not teetering on the recession. You see, a thing about recessions is that we won't hear about the recession. We could be in one right now. We're not sure. Because all the indicators that the uh, economists use to determine whether or not there's a recession, meaning a shrinking of the economy, uh, they're, um, they're backward looking, meaning they, they won't know we're, we're in a recession now until months from now. They'll look back, oh yeah, we were in a recession back then, or not. 
That's how it is with recessions. So there's a decent uh, there's a decent chance that we are already in a recession, or we're right on the brink of it. At least there's a major slowdown. Again, this is normal in economies. Recessions are as common as rainy days and sunny days. It just happens. This is the way things go. It's the nature of the universe and the economic uh, forces that drive the world's economies are subject to the same same forces. So yeah, I think the third reason why we're seeing not so many hiring is more difficult hiring is because of this recession that we are getting close to or we might be in. So that impacts things as well. So you have the three things now. We have AI, definitely. We have uh, the over-hiring during the COVID boom years. And we also, we are probably in a recession now. So this is the situation we're in. That's it. So that's why people are not being hired as much as they were. There's phantom jobs. You hear different numbers, different reports. So it is hard to get a job now, for sure, especially compared to the boom years. So what's a nerd to do? What are you going to do now that uh, jobs are harder to come by. Well, you want to do a few things. Number one, you want to make sure your costs are under control. The key to economic freedom, by the way, is keeping your costs under control as best you can. So if you live at home with your parents, stay at home with your parents. Um, if you have bills to pay, tr try to look at, do a budget, figure out where you're paying money, where you're putting out your money, and start cutting. You should do it, just like every business does it, right? Anyhow, that aside, what are you going to do in terms of uh, positioning and strategy to get a job? What you should do is a like, try to get some sort of experience, no matter what, in the real world. Whether it's building a WordPress site, updating somebody's Joomla or WordPress or Drupal site, whether it's installing somebody's uh, Wix site or their, updating their Shopify, whatever key is to get real world experience that you can put into a resume, you can put on, put into an online portfolio. You don't want to go to a prospective employers with a school projects or projects that you've done on your own. That is not the same. Anyone will tell you who has real job experience will tell you that a big part about being a professional is being able to work with other people, to be able to gather requirements, execute on requirements, communicate well. You don't get that type of training in the a school project or this project that you do on your own. So it's very important that you get this real world experience. In my own mentoring program, after the people learn the fundamentals of the web stack, the web stack, I think it gives you the widest range of opportunities in terms of development and coding. Then I have them do two to three small free freelance projects, and it doesn't really matter what you're doing, as long as it has something to do with building a website or a web app or, or any type of app. You just want to get out there. So, you know, I'm not talking about taking on a project that's going to take you five months to do. I'm talking about like, you know, a little job that might take you a week to do, even if you do it for free. You want to do this for two reasons. A, you're going to gain valuable experience that's going to make you far more valuable and juicy to prospective employers, if that's your goal, because they oh, this person actually did real world work. Yes, he did install this Shopify, uh, did the updates for them. Oh, they did set up their WordPress blog and and uh, got it up and running, hooked it up with PayPal, etc. This is valuable to employer because it shows that you can work with people, that you can execute on things. This is very very important. In fact. Prior to the AI revolution, and it's even more so now, when people were looking to hire developers, the number two thing they look for is interpersonal skills, the ability to communicate, the ability to speak well, to, to uh, convey uh, information succinctly and properly. Very important. So you want to get out there and demonstrate you have all this by actually building real things for real clients. Even the simplest things, even the simplest things. So you might do three, four WordPress sites, install some plugins, configure it, maybe configure a theme or something. As an example, maybe hook up a PayPal donation button. And then next thing you know, you got a job building uh, some agentic AI um, applications, which has nothing to do with WordPress, but because you're the person who's actually worked with clients and delivered on projects, fantastic. So... To get, if you 
can't find a job, do two to three small free freelance jobs for small businesses. So the second advantage of this freelance strategy, if you will, is that it's going to start developing some real world reputation and contacts, which you're going to find as small business owners tend to talk to and know other small business owners. So if you work well, let's say with a coffee shop, you know, you set up your, you set up their social, you set up a landing page for them, you get their Google business uh, page up and running, that kind of stuff, right? It's all, to me, it's all part of development. It's all kind of intermingled now, right? They will say, hey, I worked with John or Abdul or uh, Nicole, and I did this great job, and they did this great job. Look what they did. Oh, yeah, pretty good. And uh, so then you're going to have a testimonial, and you're going to have reputation. Very important to build your reputation. Somebody I talked about years ago, I said that uh, the most valuable asset you're going to have as an individual is your reputation. If you have a great reputation... Even if you go to zero in terms of your net worth, because you have a great reputation, you'll be able to recover pretty darn quick. The big problem with uh, people getting into the workforce, get, starting a new business, a SaaS business, or even freelance business, whatever, is they don't have a, a track record, typically. They don't have the contacts and the reputation to be able to leverage, to be able to get things happening more quickly. They have to develop that. You have to develop trust. This is all, after all, trust is a huge issue. So there you go. Those are the two big advantages of freelancing is you get that real world skill that's so expensive, so so valuable. There we go. And number two, you start building reputation and contacts uh, with the right people. And uh, that is how you're going to skip ahead to manage uh, getting a job much more quickly. Now, you don't have to get a job necessarily, although that's a good thing. You, but you could start freelancing full-time. I know people do that very well. Some people do freelance and they have a SaaS product on the side with the idea of building the SaaS product. I talked about somebody who's in my mentoring program, is a tutor, learned to code, a math tutor. Then he learned to code. Then he developed a web app to automate some of his tutoring. Then he implemented a little bit of chat GPT to help with the functionality in his tutoring app. And then he had, uh, at least from now, at least his first paid subscriber. They were wanting to give him money so that their kid could use his uh, custom app, which he built on his own and with the help of AI. And then he implemented AI within the context of the application itself. So he's developing his own business, right? I gave the example, I believe he was getting paid 40 pounds a month for the student. But if you have, you know, you have 100 students, it's, uh, it's pretty good. It's 4,000 Pounds a month, what was that, about 7,000 US, something like that, a month? Passively, passively, just 100 students, right? So imagine 200 students, all of a sudden you're doing 8,000 pounds a month, you know? Pretty good money. Anyway, so, yeah, and then the last thing, you you know, by working with other clients, you might see opportunities where you might be able to develop your own piece of software that you can take to the market as well. So there you go. You got to be a little bit more nimble now. It's not as simple as doing a React project and getting a job because uh, it's 2001 and people are not one, 2021 COVID years and people are hiring everybody and their dog for big money because they're just scared. The defensive hire phase of the economy is over. We're in the rebalancing now. I've seen this stuff before. Don't worry. Follow what I just Laid out for you, you follow this, and you, uh, you'll you be okay. Hey, I'm Uncle Steph. I mentor people in software development, business, many other things as well. Uh, being that I'm much older than you, probably, I'm ancient. Uh, I have decades of experience in the industry as a developer and as an entrepreneur and many other things. So I just try to share my knowledge here. By the way... Uh, let me know in the comments below. I'm thinking of restarting my podcast. The thing is, I have a lot of real knowledge in software, business, uh, personal finance, investments, uh, health, nutrition, combat sports. I'm trying to decide how to, uh, how to do my podcast, what podcast I'm going to do. I think I'm going to stick to code, maybe have a coding podcast. And an entrepreneur business podcast within the entrepreneur business co 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 podcast, excuse me, 
I think in there, I'll, uh, I'll talk about personal finance, investments, and so forth. And in the coding, I'll talk about not only development and learning code and getting jobs, but also the SaaS end of things. I'm not sure. Let me know. Let me know what you think about the podcast idea. Uh, with the podcast, how is it different from one of these talks? That's the question. How is it different from one of these talks? Maybe it's a little bit more open-ended. I'm not sure. Let me know below. All right. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you love my long hair, give me a thumbs up. If you hate my long hair, give me two thumbs down. And that's it for now. We'll talk soon.